The South Carolina Hall of Fame was founded in Myrtle Beach in 1973 to recognize and honor contemporary and past citizens who have made outstanding contributions to South Carolina's heritage, history, and progress. Marion Wright was born on June 6, 1939, in Bennettsville, South Carolina. It was the defining force of my life. Um, I grew up in a segregated rural town that told me as a black girl that I wasn't very valuable, but I didn't believe it. And I always knew that I would make a difference in changing it. I always had to test the limits. I, um, I can't stand being told I can't do something, and I can't stand seeing any children excluded from anything. So the seeds of much of what I do at the Children's Defense Fund grew out of what happened in Bennettsville. Wright attended Spelman College in Atlanta from 1957 to 1960, an urgent time in the civil rights movement. She quickly became deeply involved. One day, out of the sit-in movement, I went down to the local NAACP office to volunteer, and I saw all of these complaints that had come in from poor black people all over Georgia that no lawyer could respond to because they didn't have the money and there weren't enough lawyers. And I asked myself, what in the world am I doing? thinking about, as I was at the time, going to study 19th century Russian literature. <laughs> um, I didn't want to teach. I wanted to stay in the South. And although I absolutely hated law school and hate the law, it was clear that what was needed was lawyers. In 1960, Wright enrolled at Yale Law School, the epicenter of the Northern Student Civil Rights Movement. After she graduated in 1963, her dedication to political activism led her to Mississippi, a notoriously violent hotbed of racial strife. She went to work in the NAACP Legal Defense Fund office in Jackson, Mississippi, becoming the first black woman to practice law in the state. The young activist was shocked by the profound destitution she encountered in the communities of the Mississippi Delta. At the same time, the issue of American poverty was rising on the national agenda. This administration today, here and now, declares unconditional war on poverty in America. Though alleviating poverty was not Wright's only cause, she felt it demanded the greatest urgency. By the mid-60s, she had become well known as an advocate for Mississippi's poor. In March 1967, Wright testified before the Senate Subcommittee on Employment, Manpower, and Poverty. She persuaded the committee members to visit Mississippi, and hear testimonials from poor residents of the state. Appalled by the degree of privation they witnessed in Mississippi, the committee members returned to Washington and pushed through legislation introducing free food stamps and expanding free school meal programs. Senator Robert Kennedy, especially, became a vocal proponent of child welfare services. But by the end of that year, Wright faced a major hurdle. The promises of the great society have been shot down on the battlefield of Vietnam. In the wake of the Tet Offensive, America's eyes were on the conflict in Vietnam, and the issue of hunger at home was quickly crowded off the headlines. Then, on April 4, 1968, Wright's friend and fellow advocate for the poor, Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. Just two months later, Robert Kennedy, too, was murdered. Though devastated by the deaths of these two great men, Wright resolved to carry on their work. America's poor had lost two of their strongest allies. Now it was up to her to be their champion. In the summer of 1968, she married Peter Edelman, whom she'd met in Mississippi when he served as Robert Kennedy's legislative assistant. The movement um, simply took new forms after 1968. Um, the advocacy that I'm doing today on behalf of children is a direct result of what went on in the late 60s, but it was very clear that we had to develop new strategies, new ways of framing issues, new ways of tapping into the broader self-interest um, so that the whites would perceive it as their self-interest. It has always been in their self-interest to deal with issues of race and class. And so we began to talk about children rather than poor adults and to talk about prevention and to show the ways in which the deprivations that black and poor children face also affect middle class and, and, and non-poor children and white children. In 1973, 
Marion Wright Edelman founded the Children's Defense Fund, the first special interest group dedicated to children. The CDF, an advocacy and research center for children's issues, investigates consequences of and solutions to childhood poverty. They produce research that shows practical, economic reasons for investing in poor children. The Children's Defense Fund's data-driven, child-focused approach has made it the leading child advocacy organization in the country. As its founder and leader, Marion Wright Edelman has been a powerful advocate for children for over 40 years. The many laws and programs Wright Edelman has successfully fought for through the Children's Defense Fund include an Anti-Discrimination Act for Handicapped Children, a bill for child care and expanded tax credits for low-income families, expansion of free school meal programs, expansion of anti-teen pregnancy programs in high schools, the Family and Medical Leave Act, increased funds for the free immunization of uninsured children, and the Head Start program. People often ask me, how in the world do you keep doing this year after year, and why did you ever choose to do this? I said, it never occurred to me not to do it, and it wouldn't occur to me ever to give up.